Actually, no way. Actually, no way. Vashiluwi. Marim Deni. We no we no mkuai muri shani uko. Awale salama kesha. Ako kwa makuli we no. Mkuai. Mkuai yetu alivi lo kukuacha lo chabusaka. Nakuluko ina kuacha tala lele lo. Mkuai. Yeah, I'm quite. Yeah. Let me see. What's your name? We know I'm quite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm quite. Yo, we know I'm quite. I'm quite. Hmm. What's your name? Ah, we know I'm quite. Pardon, pardon. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Mr. K, how are you? Hey, Mr. Stone, I'm cool, man. Yeah. <laughs> I'm cool. I love that one. <laughs> ah, Sister Guava, how are you? I don't know who the who the who the, the moderator. Sister Guava, are you the moderator? I can see. Yes, you can. I am Brother Sayid is the moderator today. Hmm? Brother Sayid. Okay. Yeah. He's not in here. Bashlo, you 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 might be might be having a, another another device. Do you have the phone and the computer at the same time? Pardon? You have the computer and the phone at the same time? Oh. No. No. There's, a, there's a feedback somewhere. Oh, there's a feedback. Can I get one minute? Yeah, that's that's better. That's better. Nah, that's better. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Happy Sabbath. Hi, Pastor. Hello, my elder. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? Doing well, doing well, doing well. I was panicking. I thought I'm late. Yes, you are late. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you, oh, you, you, the preacher preaching. You, 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 are, you, are, you are on time. I haven't even seen the preacher yet. Let me check. Okay. Uh oh. I have to prepare in case the preacher doesn't show up. I haven't seen the preacher yet. I, uh, 
That's not good. No, I haven't seen the preacher yet. Let me see. No, I haven't seen the preacher. And unless unless he is the the the, 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 the ebony guest there. Okay. Yeah, I haven't I haven't seen Pastor Sam. Well, let me leave you then. Let me look for him. Yeah, he is joining us, I'm sure. I hope so, because I spoke with him an hour ago. He was on the road. Oh, okay. Oh, all right. Yeah. Yeah, no, I haven't seen him. I'm I'm looking for him. I haven't seen him on the on the um and, and who who is our moderator for tonight? Uh, uh Elder Emmanuel Sign. I haven't seen him either. Yeah. Okay. I thought he should do I, we spoke. It's crazy. I haven't seen him either. We spoke 10 minutes ago. Yeah, yeah Pastor Simusoja is in. Great. All right. Yeah, Pastor Simusoja is in. Let me see our moderator here. Uh oh. Well, you can take it over. I need to send you a text of the program. No, you yeah. you 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 are it, my, my, my Pastor. If 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 if, <laughs> if my sign is not going to be in the moment, you are it now. Oh, okay. Oh. Hey, my sign, are you in? No, uh, no. Actually, this is Monga. Uh, um, yeah, I just that's joined. Nice. Actually, I I was so busy. I have not even sat down uh, since work. Um, he said he was gonna be here. Oh, yeah. uh, maybe my pastor can lead us while he's sure. coming because I'm still doing something here. Sure. Yeah, yeah. My pastor has Yeah, let me let me mute everybody. You have to unmute yourself to speak. I'm I'm, I'm muting everybody. All right. Okay, my pastor, take over. You unmute yourself first. Am I on? You are on. Okay. Good evening. Good evening, everybody. I want to welcome you all to our worship this evening. Um, first of all, I, I, I want to say that uh, Friday is the Lord's day. That's when the Lord this day begins. Amen. Uh, I, 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 I am so, so thankful to the Lord that we can come and uh, have this rest together. As we welcome the holy hours of the Sabbath, again, I want to welcome you all from north, from south, from east, from west, from Central America. Good evening, everybody. Um, to begin our program, I will offer the word of prayer. Let's pray. Our kind and loving Father above in heaven tonight, we want to thank you for bringing us together as we worship you this day. We want to invite the presence of your Holy Spirit in the person Jesus that he will guide us in all what we're going to do tonight. You have chosen your servant who is going to speak to us. Anoint him with the power of the Holy Spirit that the ways that he is going to use will be ways that will be coming from you. Mm. Hide him, Lord, behind the cross. Mm. We see him, Lord, we may see you. At the end of the day, we can appreciate and praise your holy name for who you are and what you continue to do in each one's life as we journey for home. This is our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Pastor, uh, uh -oh. Brother Carter is going to uh, pray for the, uh, the prayer request. Okay, uh, there's someone already lined up. Are okay. you ready for that now? Oh, no, no, no. Okay. Okay. Uh, 
Uh, Brother Sain, are you there? No, I haven't seen him yet. He was calling me. I, I, I don't know why. Okay. All right. To, to begin our program tonight, we want to um, encourage each one of you to bring your requests, your prayers, prayer requests to the Lord. We have chosen someone who is going to intercede on our behalf. Um, I will ask the man who has been chosen to, to pray for the prayer request. Brother Harrison Msonda, are you here? Yes, he is. Okay, thank you. Take note of the prayer requests. Any prayer requests uh, or praises tonight, the floor is yours. Any prayer requests? Or do you have anyone with a praise? Well, I, I just want to. That's the elder Carter. Chris Carter. Yeah. Okay. Good to see you. Good to see you okay. too. <laughs> okay. Well, I guess we're seeing everyone now. All right. Yeah. Okay. Here for a while, but give thanks to Zoom also. I just want to give God thanks in the way He's been leading. And I've always said it, and sometimes people may think I it, it's it's just a word but in my life i'm fortunate to say that god has never allowed anything to take me by surprise nothing he's either prepared me or showed it to me before time and there's a difference when you know before you're, you're gonna go through or have an idea when you're going through it just doesn't affect you the same way so I just want to give God thanks for his leading, for preparing me for stuff that I go through or that I would experience and just for his providence in my life. Amen. Thank you, Elder Carter. Yeah, this is Isaac Zulu and my wife, Elizabeth. She's on the side here. Yeah, um, it's a praise and a prayer request at the same time. Um, you know, our son, he's in Zambia. Uh, he, he went on this uh, very, it was quite a mission. Uh, you know, he's a pilot in Zambia. So right. they went on this mission to bring back some Zambians who are stranded because of COVID in India. Mm. So it was quite a complicated flight and they, they you know, they, they were sent to India. He they flew from Lusaka into Nairobi, Djibouti, Oman, mm -hmm. yeah. wow. and uh, uh, in Mumbai, uh, New Delhi, and uh, finally back. Wow. He didn't tell us much about that flight. You know, he just sent a message to say the day was leaving in fact, it was worried at the airport. Say, I'm on this. I'm, I'm, I'm going on this mission to India. So, but he, he is back now with his friends. They, it was a successful mission. They brought back the stranded Zambians, and um, uh, so we thank God for the safe uh, flight that they kept them uh, on this mission. And uh, he, but they're in quarantine now. He's <laughs> in quarantine including the, the Zambians we are stranded. So we asked for prayers that, uh, you know, they, they were traveling in this COVID, uh, uh, you know, environment and uh, some of the passengers they brought, we don't know what state they were in. Though before he left and his, the, his um, friends, they were tested, they were negative. And when they came back, they were tested again, they were, but they had to be quarantined for 14 days. So that, that's uh, the praise and, um, and, 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 and prayer request. And also that you continue praying for my wife. She's going for another MRI tomorrow. So we, we pray for. Thank you. Thank you, Doc. Any more prayer requests or praises? The floor is up. 
it's, it's press for me, Pastor. Uh, we are coming to the end of the, uh, the semester. Next week is the exam time for, for our students, my students in particular. It has been an interesting uh, experience. Um, not that uh, it, it was the first time for me. I, have, I, have some, I had some, quest, some classes on online and some classes face to face. So everything was converted to, to uh, online. And, and they have done what they can do. I just pray that they do well. Next week is exam time. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the floor is still open for praises or prayer requests. I, I know she's going to kill me, but uh, our daughter had a, had a birthday this week. Chongo had a birthday, and her, their daughter is going to have a birthday this coming week, so oh, nice. it's time for birthdays. Thank you. Elder Msonda, Harrison Muyeba Msonda, are you in? Yes, I am. Okay. You can take it over for intercessory prayer. Thank you. It's hard to welcome each and every one of us that are under the sound of my voice this evening uh, that we gather through this media to worship the Lord and welcome the Sabbath. Um, it is nice to see everyone here and uh, it's time for us to talk to the Lord in prayer. Shall we pray? Amen. Our Father, God in heaven, God, we want to thank you for the Sabbath race. We want to thank you, dear Lord, for having kept us throughout this week. When the world is shaken, when the leaders are running to and fro, when individual families are in quarantine, in some kind of incarceration which they do not understand, when children in homes are asking the parents why they are going to school, dear Lord. When people are mourning their loved ones without a proper burial, but yet we are not far from knowing that you are still in control. Mm. Father, we thank you for even sustaining our lives, those of us that are still alive up to this point. We may take it through up until now. Lord, as we sojourn in this heartache of our sojourn, our prayer, dear Lord, is that you may forgive us of our sins. But we bring our sins to the cross of Calvary, knowing that even as we worship you, dear Lord, we realize in our hearts that we are not worthy even to raise in your hands sometimes. But we thank you for Jesus who died for us on the cross of Calvary and brought us back into the fold of righteousness. Father, this evening, there are those of our brothers and sisters that are nursing people that are sick. There are those of our brothers and sisters who are mourning their loved ones. Father, we commit them into your own hands. In a very special way this evening, I want to thank you, dear Lord, for Brother Carter for the places that he has brought forward. He realizes that you are his God and his Savior. And that everything that you do for him, dear Lord, he forgets you, Lord, because you have been there for him, and that's your way to be praised. We also want to commit our son, Zulu, the pile of dear Lord, who flew all the way to India, having stopped over with the hopes in Nairobi, Djibouti, Mumbai, and finally to dear Lord, and brought them back home safely to Zambia. The mission they undertook, dear Lord, is a mission worth praising, is a mission worth thanking, because they were saving souls, dear Lord. But again, as they sit down and quarantine, we know that you are the Lord of hope, you are the Lord of healing, you are the Lord of grace, and that we know that you are with them. Father, I want to thank you for the seven government for arranging this rescue operation to bring our brothers and sisters back home to Zambia. We praise you, we thank you, we glorify your name. 
Just want to commit Sister Zoro as she be going for another human rights award. We ask your divine intervention in her in, in the process that's going to take place thereon. With the shares that she's going to, that going to be used on her own and the shares that human beings have confronted. But we ask you, dear Lord, that whatever case may be, you are the greatest healer of all time, and that your hand is not far from healing. I want to thank you, dear Lord, also, your brother Mudede, as he prepares the students for our uh, exams. We are very special, dear Lord. Sometimes we cannot find these teachers as they teach the students, dear Lord. The amount of work they put in, the pressure that they feel cannot be measured by anything. But because they have chosen a noble cause to prepare children and young ones for the future, God, we want to commit them into your own hands. I want also to commit the students who are preparing for the exams, dear Lord. We pray for each and every student in the homes of those represented here today. Let them know that you are still in control and that the schools will go well. And now Lord, I want to also pray for my wife who has been sick for the past three weeks. It's been a very trying time, dear Lord. She had she was uh, asymptomatic with all the symptoms, dear Lord, but Father, you intervened on that now she's feeling well. I praise you and thank you, dear Lord, for the journey that you made through. I also want to pray, dear Lord, and thank you for the birthdays for the young family who are celebrating their birthdays. Uh, Sister Chongo and her daughter, dear Lord, in the coming days. May you be with them. They, they grow to be uh, such a kind of father as, as they've always been. And our Father, even as we start studying your word this evening, we invite the Holy Presence. We commit the pastor that's going to talk to us, Brother Sosha. May the words that he preaches the sitting dear Lord come from on high. May they find a room in our hearts that we may grow spiritually. I think as we go forth in the coming with the Lord, we may know that we have been in the presence of the Lord. Lord, we thank you, we praise you, we honor you, because we pray and ask in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Elder Msonda, for that intercessory prayer. Um, at this time, I will call upon the leadership of Azana to give an announcement if there is any. Elder Chiyombe. Are we on? Uh, Elder Chiyombe. Hello. Sorry. Hello. <clears throat> You're on. Yes. Um, I think the only announcement we have is for tomorrow. We have uh, uh, Dr. Ngoma at 9. Uh, I did send the, uh, the Zoom. Um, uh, count. Uh, so we'll be having Dr. Ngoma, he'll be talking about the 5G uh, uh, technology. <clears throat> uh, so far, that's the only announcement I have. I'm not sure if there are any other uh, announcements. And then they, I'm not sure. No, not really, no. Okay. Thank you so much. Let's enjoy the message. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, uh, Elder Chiyombe, the president of Azana for that announcement. Please pay attention to those announcements and plan to attend those meetings. Those meetings are for you, for us, or as Azana members. And invite your friends. Okay, um, I, before I call up the preacher, I want to challenge everyone who is on this prayer line. And the challenge I'm going to throw at you is this. First of all, I would like to tell you a story. Um, about a month ago, I began um, um, looking at the list of Azana members. And I noticed that on that list of Azana members, there are people who are not on my contact. 
on my contact list on my phone. And I decided to intentionally begin to call randomly. And as I began to call randomly, I met people that I have never known and I have never met. But they're Zambians. And uh, I'll tell you of one story. I called a man who is in Arizona. And uh, after I made that call, uh, the, the man was overjoyed by the call that was coming from me. And uh, in our interaction, we developed a unshakable bond. After that prayer, that man, almost every Friday or every week, he will call to check on me to find out how I am doing. And he has been praying for my family, and I have been praying for his family. I found out something in common that we, we both men have. He's married to a nurse. I am married to a nurse. And so, this really experience has made me uh, has, as a person, has made me to be, um, I, was, I have been humbled by the people that I have talked to and uh, that I have come in contact, there have been actually good people that I have been talking to from the time I started this journey. And I want to challenge each one of you tonight. Go look at the list and uh, begin contacting those people, randomly those that are not on your contact. You will be amazed to see how you will be blessed as I have been blessed. And come back next week. When you come back next week, we will hear your stories about those contacts. For now, I will call upon the, um, the speaker of the day. This evening, we have uh, a man of God who is going to speak to us. He's from Seattle, Washington. Pastor Simujosha has been in this country for some time. He has worked in a few conferences within this land of America. He has been a blessing to every place he has been to. Pastor Smuzosha, is your time. Speak to the children of God. Pastor Simzosha, your turn. Mute. Can you hear me now? Can everybody hear me? Yeah, we're mute yet, Pastor. We can hear you, Pastor. Yes. All right, thank you. Thank you very much. You know, it, it looks strange. You know, I, I haven't seen most of your faces and I, I believe most of you have not seen my face in a long time and most of you don't know what age has done to to each one of us but we just want to say thank you lord that we're still here amen still amen. here you know and i'm so glad my nephew there dr mundende uh pastor mankuri i think we met one time in botswana that was the only physical contact that we had but right. we've come to know each other you know um for a long time and i just want to say just thank you lord for this moment that we can be here together i <clears throat> there's so much sunshine here i couldn't find a place in the house where i could sit down and get the light controlled so i decided to come and sit in my truck and i hope everything's okay is that okay with everybody amen yes, sir Amen. We praise the Lord for that. Thank you so much. 
we we all as human beings god has given us different gifts and i know within azana god has blessed us with you know brilliant and powerful speakers speakers who've taken god's word and shared it with his people to the extent that everybody you know feels blessed and as i was asked to speak this is the first time that i'm speaking on on zoom i know i've spoken a couple of times i used to tell her the um, uh manga that i'm a spare wheel when you don't find anybody to do it then please you can you're more than welcome to come and you know contact me but i just want to thank god that you know he's made it possible for me to be here with you all and that we can share god's word together and see what he has for us i was talking to pastor hamankoli over the phone and we've been discussing you know the topic of christ our righteousness for me that topic is very close to my heart it's something that i've written about it's something that i've taught it's something that i've shared you know and today i just want to share a little bit of that and i entitled my message oh i didn't know mm. and i'm going to share all my aha moments and as far as coming to know certain things are concerned some things that i'll share with you will make sense others will not but for me they made sense and all i'm trying to do in this situation is to just take you back so that you can also analyze your aha moments and see exactly how you can bring those into your life and see how you've been blessed and how you can share to bless others as i was preparing for this um talk today as usual i had to ask the lord lord what do you want me to say what do you want me to do what do you want me to share with god's people we are living at a time that is so strange. We're living at a time that is full of uncertainty. And as Christians, it's not something that we should run away from. In fact, it's something that we should embrace. Like Paul's writing the Romans says, when because, you see these things happening, yeah. look up for your redemption draweth nigh. And that's exactly what we're doing right now. That we have to look up. You know, politicians, doctors, and everybody, they'll bring in, they'll say what they want to say. Yes, God has given them wisdom to do all that. But for you and I, God has called us to a life of prayer. And as we pray, we are praying, looking up. Even so, come Lord Jesus. Mm. Let that be our prayer, friends. And as Pastor Hamankuli said, one of the things that, 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 uh, that I have really you know, um, uh, taken on in as far as my ministry is concerned is that I know one thing, I'm not like uh, my young man Harrison Sonder there, who's a writer. I'm not a writer, I'm a speaker. And I don't like sending texts. I don't know how to do that, but I like picking up the phone so that we can talk. When I hear the voice and I feel good, say, so, oh yes, so somebody's out is out there. Amen. You know, Malachi 3.16 says, and those who, had, who loved the Lord spoke one to another, and the books of remembrance was, were open in heaven. You know, every time we talk of, a preacher talks of Malachi, everybody thinks of Malachi chapter 10, 3 verse 10. Oh, bring you the tithes. No, I'm not talking about tithes today, friends. I'm talking about communication, as Pastor Mankuri was saying. It's, it's a critical, we're living at a critical moment where, despite social media, we need to get in touch with one another. We yeah. need to know one another. When you hear me talk to you, you could tell the emotional touch or you could tell the emotional level where I'm at at that moment, as opposed to social media. Some of us don't know the social media, you know, things like that. But when you call me, when you talk to me, or when I talk to you, then I'll be able to know exactly and understand where you are. And then I'll know how to pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you in this moment just to thank you. Mm. That through technology, you can bring us together. As we study about you, Christ, our righteousness, help us, Father, to know that we are not in this thing alone. Things may look to be very difficult right now, 
we may not even know where we are, but you've given us this privilege that we, we gather together as brothers and sisters for nothing but to encourage one another and to know that you're still our God and you still love us. Forgive us of our sins, Lord, for there are many. Lead us not into temptations, but deliver us from the evil one. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I had been invited to go and speak at a, a church, at a friend's church, and um, Sabbath morning we were there and we're getting ready to go and, you know, have prayer. Uh, the, the, the one of the one that was going to give the announcements, one of the elders was a lady. And um, so she came, she was out there and she gathered us together. And then her little boy came in the room where we were. And as it were, I was the only person of color in there. So this young man came to me. Is you know, children are, are so innocent. He came to me just before we prayed. He held my hand, flipped it on the side, then he looked at it, and then flipped it back. He looked at it, and then, he, he, you know, he, 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 he stands out there thinking, what is this? Then the next thing that came, he takes his other hand and points at my other hand here, paint, paint. So in as far as the young man was concerned, in his moment was that this was okay, but this was paint, painted in a different color. And when he said that, the mother came trying to pull him away from me. I said, no, 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 no. This is a teaching moment. Maybe you as parents have not taught the young man that they're different, the people that look different, but we all God's children. Acts like chapter 17 is made on men of one blood. And mm -hmm. that just explain to him that, you know, there are people that are, that are different from you. And so I want to believe that that was all. I didn't know for the young man that there were other people who look different from me, people who have, you know, different shades that, than I have. A cousin of mine who lives in Botswana calls me and says, well, my husband discovered that you had been featured in Mission Story. I said, oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> so, she, so she says, yes, my husband just found out here that, you know, you've been featured in the mission story and, and found your name in there. So I'm thinking, oh, you know, when I was a little boy, that's one thing that I really, you and I know when Sabbath school came, you had the Sabbath school secretary, you had the, the Sabbath school superintendent, and then you had the chorister, and you had everybody, and you had somebody to tell the mission story as to what was happening. So that, for me, to be taught that I was fidgeted in the mission story, it was like, oh, sending me back to my village, Soko village, Chief Tafuna, way yeah. back on the shores of Lake Tanganyika, back yeah. to my little, you know, uh, uh, days as a little boy, and I was there. They said, oh, man. So it says, well, here's a link. You can pick it up on the internet. And I went to read the story. Friends, it was, it, it, it was something that I didn't know what God can do. And I just thank God that things happened in the way that they did. And the unfortunate thing is that by the time the story was coming out, the brother that was involved with me in that story had passed away. So there was no way that I could be get back to him and, 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 you know, talk to, share with him. What had happened, I'll share that briefly before I get into our study, was that I had gone for a conference meeting, which is 150 miles away from the church where I was, the conference offices. So after the meeting, I'm driving back somehow I realized that I ran out of gas. So I went to the gas station. When I went to the gas station, they had just had a power failure. And I was about 15, 15 miles from my house. They had a power failure. And they could not take any credit cards or debit cards or anything like that. All they needed was cash. And this guy tells me, well, I can't help you. You know, um, there's nothing that I can do. So I said, look, guys, I need to get home. You know, I need some gas. So this gentleman stands up and says, okay, I'm going to give you my money, but I want it back. He said, oh, sure, you get your money back tomorrow. 
And the girl who was sitting next to him says, no, 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 no. You give these black people money, you never see it. And that was it. You never see the money. And finally, you know, the man says, okay, you look like you're a person that I can trust. So he gave me $40. I put gas in my car, $40, I went home. The following day, I came back and gave him back his $40. $40. In fact, I gave him an extra $5. So he says, well, you know, something, when I went home, I didn't know whether I was, I did right to give you the money or, you know, I should trust you, but somehow you're back here. And to cut the long story short, that's how it ended up. Two Sabbaths from there, we are in the church. And um, his, what I didn't know was that this gentleman's father-in-law was a member of my church. And this Sabbath, he has convinced this man, who was a, a gas station manager, to come to church with him. And as he came, you know, I, I was looking around, I started greeting everybody, and, 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 and we're talking. Then I see him, and he sees me. Then he says, weren't you the guy that I paid gas for? I said, yes, I am. And I'm so glad that you're here. He says, you're the pastor here? I said, yes. And you know what that did to me, friends, was that just brought tears to my eyes. That if I had not taken the money back, what kind of witness would I have been? Mm. I would have been a bad witness. And it's from that encounter, according to this man, that he decided to join the church. And he became an elder. And then he died as, 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 as an elder at that particular church. So there are many moments in your life that when you look back, you can see, oh, I didn't know that God can work through these things. It may look like a very simple event, but I want to believe that there are no small events in your life and in my life. God is using every event to make you who he wants you to be. God yeah. is using every event in my life to make me the witness that he wants me to be. And so as I was studying, preparing this, one text kept coming to my mind, John 3.16. John 3.16, I said, Lord, what is John 3.16? John 3.16 is, is, is a text that is widely quoted. Wherever you go, every Christian at least knows John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. I said, everybody knows that. What's so special about John 3.16? Jesus was talking to Nicodemus at that point in time to explain certain things. I said, that's, I know it, I know it. And friends, and the Spirit of the Lord started working with me, helping me understand John 3.16 in a way that I never understood it before. The first thing that came to mind was that I may call it the law of duality, or I don't know what other people may call it, but Christ taught, you know, most of Christ's lessons came in pairs. We see the wheat, we see the tares. We see the wide road, we see the narrow road. What else? Can somebody remember another pair that Christ talked about? We see the wise man who built the house on the rock, and we see the foolish man who built his house on the what? On the sand. And, and so there's so many pairs that Christ taught. We see the sheep and we see the gods. And so I'm thinking, oh yes, so what about this? What, 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 is, what is this? What has this got to do with John 3.16? And friends, as I was continuing praying, I said, Lord, help me. I do not understand. I don't understand. And then I started seeing it, that what Christ was revealing to Nicodemus was one of the most fundamental truths that maybe in our own humanity we will never understand. And for me to understand that, I came to see two rivers running the river one river called the river of perishing and the other river the river of everlasting life the river of perishing is running and everybody's there why because from from the time our forefathers chose sin over righteousness we were all like david says we we're all born in sin and so we were all born in that river of perishing. We're just swimming in that river of perishing. 
And Jesus is telling Nicodemus, he says, but God loves the world. The world that was swimming in the river of perishing, God loved it so much because he did not create the world. He did not create heaven and earth to be swimming in the river of perishing. He created each one of us for his own glory. Mm. And at that point in time, Jesus tells Nicodemus, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him, whosoever believes in him should not perish, but should have everlasting life. In essence, he's saying that the only way you can escape the river of perishing is by you believing in the Lord Jesus Christ. And when you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, then he is the only bridge that will take you the river of everlasting life. Oh, I didn't know that. I have been taught from my childhood. Yes, there is salvation. I've been taught so many things when I was young, and these are things that I knew. But now it's like things are opening up in my mind. I'm beginning to see exactly some things that are deeper than what I thought they were. Mm. And the unfortunate thing, friends, is that even when we come to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, Christ is something that keeps me awake. For those who've known me, I've always said this many, many times. Many, many times I've said this. In Matthew chapter 7, 21 through 23, Jesus says, it's not everybody who says, Lord, Lord, that will enter the kingdom of heaven except those who do my will. In that day, I'm paraphrasing, they shall come to, to me and say, Lord, didn't we do this in your name? Didn't we do this in your name? Didn't we do this in your name? And he says, and I will tell them, depart from me, you doers of iniquity. I never knew you. So friends, we can learn about Jesus Christ and we can do everything that we can, but if we don't come to know him, we we'll only hear about him and we don't know him, we'll still be in the river of perishing and perish while we're doing things in his name. And that's scary for me. That's scary for me. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. In the river of perishing, we could be there. We could do everything that we want to do. We could be there, friends, and we're there. Each one of us is there because that's how we were born. We were born in sin. But we need to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. We need to believe and accept him. There's quite, a, there's quite some noise in the background, unfortunately. Uh, Pastor, you unmute yourself. I'm going to mute everybody again. All right. Yeah, you, you unmute yourself. Okay, yeah, we're there now. So I was saying that in that river of perishing, all of us are there. All of us are there. But there's a river of everlasting life. And the only way we can get to that river of everlasting life is by believing in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the only way. And mildly Christ said it in John chapter 14, read in verse six, I am the way, I am the truth, and I'm the life. No man comes to Father except by me, to paraphrase. So now we, we be, um, I started understanding, I started seeing from a different perspective how there's no eternal life, there's no way I can cross to be in the river of eternal life without Jesus Christ being the bridge. When I believe in him, I'll come out from here and I'll walk over him and be in the river of life. Like I said, again, Christ mentioned friends, Matthew chapter seven. And it's my prayer that none of us, none of us would do things for Christ while swimming in, in the river of perishing and still perish. 
when we can go and pray for people, they get healed. When we can do this, we can do miracles, but still perish. Because Jesus says, I never knew you. You used my name to do all great things, but I never knew you. I didn't know you. It's my prayer, friends, that none of us, none of us should be ever found in that, in that situation. He repeats the same thing when he talks about the sheep and the gods. The gods want to justify themselves. Oh, but we did this, but we did this. No, no. You never crossed the bridge. You never used me as the bridge. Yes, you did everything because you heard about me, but you never experienced me by walking in me, by coming in me, by being with me, by understanding who I am. You did everything, yes, and what you did was good. But it's not, it's not about that good. No, it's about you being in me to cross from the river of perishing to come to the river of life. And that has been my burden, friends. That has been my burden. Where are God's people today? Where are we today? Some of us were born in, in the Adventist church, third generation, fourth generation. We were born in here. Do we know Jesus Christ? Do we know that he is the only one? He is the only one through his righteousness. And all we need to do is just to believe in him and believe in him. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for. It is the evidence of things not yet seen, Hebrews 11, 1. When we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, then we know that we have everlasting life. Jesus said something also in John chapter 5. I call them the two resurrections. John chapter 5, verse 25. Jesus said something there. He says, the time is coming. The time is coming. And for me, this has been the time. I don't know about you, friends, but for me, this has been the time. Resurrection number one. Resurrection number one. John chapter 5, verse 25. I want to read here because it's very, very critical and very important. Most assuredly, I'm using the New King James Version. Most assuredly, I say to you, the hour is coming. Jesus is saying, I'm telling you that the hour is coming. And then listen to this. And now is, now is the hour. For me, now is the hour to know that Christ is the bridge. When the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God, and those who are here will live. Yes, friends, I was dead in the river of perishing. I was dead. But when I heard his voice, that he is the only one, he is the only one who can help me cross, get to the other side, the river of everlasting life. That was my hour. That was my resurrection. I said to you, the hour is coming. And now is when the dead, the dead will hear the voice of Christ. The dead, they're dead. I'm dead because I am in the river of perishing. I am dead. But now is the hour that when I hear the voice of God, that yes, today, you cross over to the other side. Through Jesus Christ alone, that to me is very important. Let me quickly go through this. I'm looking at the time. And now there's the second resurrection in verse 28. Do not marvel at this, for the hour is coming in which all who are in the graves will hear his voice. Those who are in the graves, it's not now, no, in the first spiritual resurrection, the hour is now. In the second physical resurrection, the hour has not been spelled. But those who are in the graves will hear his voice. And for me, friends, that was an aha moment when I realized that without Jesus Christ, I am nothing. Without Jesus Christ, I'm nothing. It's not about who I am. It's not about my strength. It's not about my goodness. It's not about anything. It's not about anything that I can do. It's not about me keeping the Sabbath. It's not about me being good. It's not about me doing anything. No, but it's about me 
understanding that Christ is the only bridge for God so loved the world that he gave, he gave his only begotten son. And through the sacrifice, Christ sealed that deal. Christ confirmed that contract, that through him, only through him, can we leave the river of perishing and cross over to the river of everlasting life. Romans chapter 5, verse 10. I want to read that text too. Paul now, who is an apostle of the Gen Gentiles, wants to translate exactly what Christ said in this form here. He says, for if we were enemies, for if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, much more, having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. Not anything that we do, friends. Not anything that, Paul is not saying, oh, because we're good, because we did this, because we did that. No, we believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. If you love me, then you keep my commandments. When we are in him, when we show him that we love him, it's not burdensome to follow his commandments at all. But when we want to do it on our own, we have problems. When we want to do it by ourselves, when we want to do it just because we want to please other people, when we want to do it because we want to please our parents, then we have issues and we have problems. Jesus is saying, come unto me, or ye that labor, and I have you in Matthew 11, and I'll give you rest. I'm asking you, friends, wherever you are, maybe you are already in Jesus Christ. Spread the word. Spread the word that other things will come later. First things first. The first thing is for you to be in Christ. First thing is for me to be in Christ. And when I'm in Christ, I'll find a completely new life out there. When we go to school, we don't know anything. Dr. Mundende and the other teachers here will understand. When kids come to school, they don't know anything. But they've come, that's what is important. They've come by coming the signal that they want to know. They're ignorant, but by coming to school, they're sending a signal that they want to know. They want to learn and know. And as Dr. Mundene stands in front of them, he starts changing their minds. And then say, oh, I didn't know that. Now I know. Now I know. And that's what we call education, friends. Let me read my last text. My last text is a text that most of you are very familiar, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, very familiar with. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, and I think it's verse 21. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, and I think it's verse 21. And Paul is writing this. Paul is an apostle of Gentiles. He wants us to understand exactly what Christ was saying in the Jewish context, that we can understand it now. As Gentiles, it says, for he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us. Listen to that. For he made him who knew sin to be sin for us. We are sinful. We are sinful. We know sin. It's easier to sin. It's easier. You don't have to teach a child to sin. You don't have to teach a child to be bad. We're inherently bad. But because God loved us, he says he made this Christ, who knew no sin, to be seen for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Not in anything else, friends. God took Jesus Christ, who, who knew no sin, and made him sin for us. Just think about that, friends. Christ had no, knew no sin, but he made him sin. That you and I who are sinful, you and I who are sinful, might become the righteousness of God in him. This is why when Jesus Christ was defining, giving the definition of eternal life in John chapter 17, verse 3, he says, and, now, and this is eternal life, that they may know you as the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. Eternal life is about those two things. Knowing that there's God, a God who loves, a God who has given Jesus Christ, that through him, you and I can be changed 
you and I can be saved. It's not about the river of condemnation. It's not about this river of perishing. No, each one of us has an opportunity through Christ to say, Lord, today, today, I want to cross over. Now I know what I didn't know, that I need you. I need you. Now I know, Lord Jesus, what you said in John 15, 5, that for without me, you can do nothing. Now I know what I didn't know. And I understand that without you, I can do nothing. Help me believe. Like the father of that son in Mark chapter 9. I brought my son for your disciples to cast this demon out of him, but they didn't. Jesus is all year of little faith. And the man says, help my unbelief. And that was my prayer. When this truth was revealed to me. For years, yes. For years, I've been doing everything. I've been going to church. I've been doing everything. Yes, and maybe I preach sermons about Christ. But I didn't know how important Christ was in my own life. And like Eudangonda told us last Friday, when he compared Christ to manna, nobody can eat that manna for you. You have to eat the manna yourself. Nobody can eat that manna for you and you feel satisfied. No, you have to eat the manna. In the same vein, you have to meet Christ one-on-one. -on -one. And when you've done that, you cross over from this river called perishing to this river God everlasting life. And when we're in that river, because the love that he shares with you, then you start reaching out and start pulling your brothers and sisters from the river of perishing, bringing them into the river of life. Thank you, Father, for loving us so much. Thank you, Father, for being so patient with us that even when we didn't know, you still loved us so much and you gave us Jesus Christ to die for us. And now, Father, even as we know now, my prayer, Father, for my brothers and sisters is that may you, by your grace, Father, give us the humility that we may be humble enough to accept you. And after accepting you, Father, we will be able to share that which we have come to know with other people. That in the final analysis, at the end of this age, when you come, we will not be gods will be shit. Thank you for your enabling. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Pastor Herman, are you here? Be muted. Yes, okay. I think it is muted. Yeah, I was muted. Sorry. Uh, um, thank you, thank you, uh, uh, um, Pastor Simuzosha, for that uh, powerful message you delivered to tonight. It is our prayer that the Lord God may continue to bless you and bless your family as you continue to serve him. Thank you. Your faithfulness to the Lord will have a long lasting impact to the people you come in contact. You have been a blessing to me personally from the time I met you in Botswana when you were a church elder in Haveron. When I met you, we continue to talk uh, you have been a blessing to me. I must confess before the children of God. Amen. How I wish we could have many more people like you, people who are contagious, people who can turn this world upside down for Jesus. The Lord is looking for each one of us who are here tonight. As you leave this place, 
I want you to ask yourself a question. What is it that I can do for Jesus? Mm. Not what Jesus can do for you, but what you can do for Jesus. I and my household, we have asked the Lord of one thing, that we can be a blessing to other people we come in. That's my challenge to you tonight. Go in the grace of the Lord until we meet again next Friday. Blessings to you. Over to you, Elder Mundende. The blessing that we could meet and, uh, you know, for those who, who want to to visit a little bit, they can continue visiting, definitely stop.